Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Oral Communication in Context. We are now at our third week, and our topic for this week is intercultural communication. For this week, we will define intercultural communication. We should also develop appreciation for different cultural perspectives. We will be also communicating sensitively taking into consideration a listener's gender, religion, beliefs, and tradition. And last but not the least, we will demonstrate effective intercultural communication skills in any situation. So before um, starting this slide, we will have a definition a nature of intercultural communication. So for the definition and nature of intercultural communication, intercultural communication happens when an individual's react, interact, negotiate, and create meanings while bringing in their varied cultural backgrounds. So for some scholars, intercultural communication pertains to communication among people from different nationalities. So still others look at intercultural communication as communication that is influenced by different ethnicities, religions, and sexual orientations. So basically, both interpretations show that intercultural communication takes place when people draw from their cultural identity to understand values, language, attitudes, and relationships. Moreover, this facet of communication can also be seen as a bargain understanding of human experiences across diverse societies so we simply put intercultural communication as the sending and receiving of messages across languages and cultures so by having the nature of intercultural communication sometimes it can flow smoothly and become very interesting for a cross-cultural group however things may not go as planned when communication is disrupted by cultural collisions so when you speak your speech is continuously accompanied by gestures facial expressions and other body movements that add to what you are saying in different ways so remember when we had our for a second week topic we had the verbal and nonverbal communication for nonverbal communication we have some gestures and facial expressions so this will fall into this uh, example so we have an example when we nod it means yes but in the Indian subcontinent, Iran, most of Europe, Latin America, and North America. Yet, however, in Greece, Lebanon, Syria, Palestine, Turkey, Macedonia, Bulgaria, and Albania. So these are some countries that indicates nodding as a disagreement. So we can see that there's already a barrier or a disrupted communication because of the cultural collision and the intercultural communication. Moreover, in the case of Japanese culture, silence as a form of communication is more integrated in their customs than in Western languages. It is therefore important for you to acknowledge and understand the many communication patterns present in other cultures. We have cultures such as contact cultures and non-contact cultures. So for contact cultures, um, we have here uh, examples of countries that have contact cultures such as Southern Europe and Middle East. 
So for these countries, people tend to stand closer to each other, touch during conversation, and maintain eye contact longer. So you can see here some Western countries kissing each other. In the Arab countries, they also kiss each other face and other Western countries also touch hands of each other. And in India, they have a communication wherein if they meet a higher prince, they will touch their feet. So on the other hand, we have non-contact cultures such as in the northern Europe and in Japan and one of their non-contact cultures um, is there is a greater distance between communicators and meaning little to no touch and less eye contact so we could see here that one of their gestures is by bowing or avoiding touching the hand of their communicator and they show great respect to their communicator as well so contact cultures and non-contact cultures provide a good example of cultural differences in communicating each culture has a different set of values and meaning this affects the way people from different cultures communicate. Various measures can be applied to be a competent intercultural communicator and to mitigate misinterpretation. So when communicating in a multicultural context, we must understand the tradition and values of the other culture. It is very, very essential. So being a competent intercultural communicator does not imply being good only in talking to foreigners. It also means communicating appropriately with people regardless of their gender, social status, age, religion, and many more. Uh, so we have here a communicative competence. So what is communicative competence? Communicative competence is needed by second language speaker to understand each other. Being unfamiliar with a local language, idiomatic expressions, phrasal verbs, and other slang words, among others, can also hinder effective communication. So on your modules, if you will refer, there is a examples of some intercultural blunders, such as in the 1970s, an aftershave product was advertised for men in the Middle East, and the ad showed a photo of a man and his dog. This product dramatically failed in Islamic countries, where dogs are considered unclean. We also have here a golf ball. Manufacturing companies sold their products in packs of four for easy purchase in Japan. But the item sold in force became unpopular because the word for sounds like the word that in Japan. So here are some communicative competence. Here at the Philippines, we also have some communicative competence. We have words that are purely um, understood only by certain language speakers we have heard of the language or should i say slang words by the lgbt group which is the pekinese language so in the picture that we have they are using the word hello shurva etching mudra joa gay vocabulary emote after 48 years, Kalor Ki, Carmi Martin, Kerry, Pudra, Chaka, Becky Lingo, Crayola, Wale, Dieter Acampo, Mariah, Kerry, and many more. So we are, some of us are unfamiliar with the languages, idiomatic expressions, phrasal verbs, and other slang words being used in the Bekinese 
language and it hinders our effective communication. Also, here in the Philippines, we have different dialects and it could also hinder an effective communication. We have here an example, Tagalog, pasensya na pero hindi kita gusto. In Ilocano, pakawan niya madi ka nga kayat. And in English, sorry but I don't like you. So for an example, there is a foreigner that, that wants to say sorry but I don't like you. But his communicator or the receiver of the message is an Ilocano and could not understand the foreigner or his communicator is a Tagalog speaker and could not understand the foreigner. So there is a hindrance between the communicator for the effective communication. We also have some slang words being used by the millennials nowadays. So we have LOL, what the WTF, Ruffle, OMG, and Limau. So these words are being used in text messages, emails, and more or so forth in some social media platforms. So, LOL is for laugh out loud. Ruffle is for rolling on the floor laughing. OMG is oh my god. And Limau is laughing my, laughing my out loud. Okay. So, here are some examples of communicative competence. So let's now discuss the developmental model of intercultural sensitivity. sensitivity. So this developmental model of intercultural sensitivity or what we call DMIS offers a structure that explores how people experience cultural differences. So according to Bennett and Bennett, it has six stages and these are the following. So we have here first stage, which is the denial. So the individual does not recognize cultural differences. So basically this individual in the denial stage might be heard saying that, for example, all cities are the same. They all have tall buildings, fast food chains, and coffee shops. So we could see that he or she is generalizing all cities. And he could not, he or she could not recognize cultural differences. Second stage that we have is defense. So for this stage, the individual starts to recognize cultural differences and is intimidated by them, resulting in either a superior view on own culture or an unjustified high regard for the new one. So we have an example. So typically for this stage, an individual in the defense stage might be heard saying the culture does not view life the way we do. Our culture is certainly better, meaning he views his own culture in a superior view. And then another example that we have is their ways are better than my own. I wish I were one of them. So for this, for this statement, he is unjustifying a hard regard for the new one. And he doesn't look his own culture as a superior view. We have here stage three. So minimization. Although individuals see cultural differences, they bank more on the universality of ideas rather than on cultural differences. So typically on this stage, an individual in the minimization stage might be heard saying a statement such as, once we see through the cultural differences, we are really just the same. So during this stage, he is just, he or she is justifying that all cultural differences 
are the same and there is a universality of ideas and there are no cultural differences. On the fourth stage, there is an acceptance and the individual begins to appreciate important cultural differences in behaviors and eventually in values. So pretty much this individual in the acceptance stage might be heard saying this statement, these people and I have different values and experiences and I think we can learn from one another. So we could see the progress between these um, stages that we have in the DMIS or the Developmental Model of Intercultural Sensitivity. Again, let's go to our stage one, which is the denial. As you can see, the individual says that all cities are the same. They have tall buildings, fast food chains, and coffee shop. For the stage two, he is in the defensive mode and saying that the culture does not view life the way we do our culture is certainly better or rather their ways are better than my own. I wish I were one of them. And then this individual was getting into the minimization or the third stage, having this statement that once we, through, once we see through the cultural differences, we really are just the same. And now we are now here at stage four, which is in the acceptance that this individual states that these people and I have different values and experiences. I, I think, and I think we can learn from one another. So it is a great structure and it is a great structure and stages that we could see how people develop and progress in experiencing cultural differences. Now let's go to the fifth stage which is adaptation. So for this fifth stage since some are still in the denial or the others are in defense or the others are in the minimization and the others are already in the acceptance, some are in the adaptation stage. And this individual is very open to worldviews when accepting new perspectives. So the statement where an individual in the adaptation stage might be heard saying or stating to address our issue, I have to adjust my approach to consider both my own and my counterpart's background. So we could see that he is very open to cultural differences and very open to adapt and accept new perspectives. And the last stage that we have in the DMIS or the developmental model of intercultural sensitivity is integration. So for this stage, individuals start to go beyond their own cultures and see themselves and their actions based on multifarious cultural viewpoints. So basically in this stage, an individual in the integration stage might be heard saying, I can look at things from the perspective of various cultures. So once you understand these stages, you might apply it to recognize communication behaviors which differ from your own. You may apply it also and to take into account what can influence these types of behaviors. And also, you could try to analyze how linguistic and cultural communities differ in terms of communication behavior and influencing factors. So since we have discussed the developmental model of intercultural sensitivity, we will be identifying the characteristics of competent intercultural communicators. 
So World Bank identifies the following traits that define a competent intercultural communicator. We have flexibility. So it is the ability to tolerate high levels of uncertainty. We have reflectiveness or being mindfulness. And we also have to be open-minded, be sensitive. We have to adapt. And we have to engage in divergent thinking, or we have to have the ability to engage in divergent thinking and systems level thinking. And one of the characteristics of competent intercultural communicator is being polite. So take note that in addition to culture, other elements such as gender, age, social status, and religion must also be taken into consideration when communicating with others. So you must refrain from showing bias when talking to someone by following the tips below. So I will be sharing the tips before we proceed to the activity. So some tips that will refrain you from showing bias is avoiding stereotypes, so generalization about a certain group. And also challenge gender norms, so avoid using he, man to refer a general group of people. To remedy this, you may use plural pronouns or rewrite a sentence to avoid using pronouns. The use of his or her is also acceptable. Also, do not talk down on younger people and the elderly. So this goes on the characteristics of competent intercultural communicator is to be polite. We also have be sensitive to the religion, the religious practices of others. That goes with sensitivity. And last but not least is be polite at all times. So do not belittle people you perceive to be in a lower social class than. So those are some tips from refraining from showing bias when talking to someone. So um, before I end this discussion on your handouts, we have four activities. You may answer it all, but I will just require you to submit activity one for activity one reach each statement and if it displays bias or insensitivity right group slash element being misrepresented for example gender social status age religion culture if it does not display bias or sensitivity right okay so we have 10 items for this activity one. And if you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask me. You may reach me through my personal account, through Facebook Messenger, or you may also personally direct ask me at school. Again, thank you for this week three topic if you have any questions don't hesitate to ask me we also have some references so you may read teachers manual for oral communication in context for senior high school retrieved from a website which is www.teacherph.com teaching guide oral communication context from depth 2016 we also have a website, httpscourses.lumenlearning.com. And if you wanted to further learn more about this third week's topic, which is intercultural communication, you may read some suggested readings. We have Oral Communication in Context, a textbook for senior high school by Apollonia Joshua from Unlimited Books in Ramos, Manila. We also have a website. You can retrieve it from n.islcollective.com English ESL Worksheets Vocabulary People What Are They? 
say. So I have given you your handouts. You may refer to your handouts for those references and suggested readings and for your requirements. So thank you once again for this week's topic. We had defined intercultural communication. We had developed appreciation for different cultural perspectives. We have communicated sensitively and take into consideration a listener's gender, religion, beliefs, and tradition by answering the activity that I had given to you. And we had demonstrated effectively the intercultural communication skills in any situation by learning the communicative competence and characteristics of competent intercultural communicators and other elements such as gender issues such as religion must also be taken into consideration when communicating with others so thank you once again before i end this discussion i would like to share to you a bible verse from the book of mark chapter 9 verse 23 said jesus everything is possible for one who believes so for me nothing is impossible from for god so if you believe and if you have faith you could reach whatever you wanted to reach for your life and you could do it possibly thank you once again and see you on our week four's lesson